Hello and welcome to another Giant Slayer TFT Top 5 Countdown video. Today our analysts will be listing the top 5 compositions for patch 10.9. There are so many builds in the meta right now, but we're here to narrow it down to just a few for you. Keep in mind that this list is not in order of strength as each of these builds is doing consistently well in the new meta. With that said, let's jump in. But before we do, don't forget to click the link in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video happen. We host many TFT tournaments with plenty of exciting content to come, so be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social media pages. Okay, folks, let's get back to the video. And to start off our top five list, we have Cybernetics coming in as the number five build. Cybernetics are still going strong as a top build in 10.9, though they aren't quite as consistent as they once were. That said, they're still doing well and are more than capable of getting you a first place finish. The core champions remain the same as you're going to want all six Cybernetics. At level eight, you have two options as you can add in either Thresh and Shen, which gives you Mana Reaver, Chrono, and Black. Blade Master, or you can slot in Kalen Misfortune for Valkyrie, Blade Master, and Blaster. Either path works, though keep in mind Misfortune and Echo can have overlap issues with their ultimates, as Echo's ability can end the channeling of Misfortune's ultimate. At level 9, look to add in Lulu, or if you're playing the Kale variation, you can add in Thresh for Mana Reaver. The item carry for this build is Aurelia, and she works best with Infinity Edge and Last Whisper. Guardian Angel or Quicksilver are great to give her for defensive items, and if you find a spatula or the item itself, you can turn Aurelia into an Infiltrator. Two Infiltrator was buffed in 10.9, so this is one of the stronger options. Outside of Aurelia, you'll ideally want Red Buff for Lucian and any Frontliner defensive items for Leona and Vi. Ionic Spark is also useful as there's a fair amount of magic damage in this build. Echo does best with either on-hit items or magic damage items. Your goal for this build is to try and fast level to 8 around stage 4 or 3. From there, you want to find an Aurelia 2, Echo, and upgrades for the rest of your cybernetics. Early game, this trait is one of the strongest especially if you get a fast Lucian 2 with red buff. The win condition for Cybernetics is generally going to be Aurelia 3, so make sure to scout and see how many other players are contesting her. Moving on to the number 4 composition on this list, we've got Mech Infiltrator. Good old Mech Infiltrator is still one of the best compositions in the meta, despite receiving nerfs for a few patches in a row now. But due to those nerfs, it's not as consistent as it once was, but when played correctly, it's strong enough to top 4 and can actually win games as well. Definitely make sure to scout to see if anyone is contesting it, as it's much harder to hit your champions if one or more players are fighting for the champions as well. The core champions are Annie, Rumble, and Fizz for the mech pilot, with Kaisa being the most important infiltrator. Shaco and Kha'Zix can be added to give four infiltrator, but with buffs to the two-piece trait, you have more flexibility to add in early Valkyrie or Sorcerers instead. Either way, your goal is at level eight with this composition to have mech pilot with four infiltrator, two Valkyrie, and two Sorcerer. Kaisa is the primary damage carry, but the super mech is equally as important, if not even more important to get items for. Ramble Vest, Quicksilver, Trap Claw, Warmogs, and Titans Resolve are all great defensive items for the Super Mech. Give these to Rumble to hold on to, though you can divide them out to other mech pilots if you want to. Kaisa does best with the Seraphs and Morellanomicon, with her most important item being a Demolitionist Charge. Without that item, it's much more difficult to top two with the build. Overall, your goal is to hit level six and get to 50 gold to begin slowly rolling your excess gold each round to hit a Kaisa three, Annie three and rumble three. Shaco and Kha'Zix can also be three starred, but they aren't as important. So don't waste too much gold in bench space to get them. The win condition is getting all of the necessary three star champions plus a demolitionist charge on Kai'Sa. All right, next up is our number three composition, Darkstar. Much like Mech Infiltrator, Darkstar is still doing well in the meta despite getting hit with the nerf bat several times in recent patches. It's much harder to play consistently as there's certain milestones you need to obtain when playing this composition in order to stabilize and get top four. That said, when you do get all the necessary pieces, your chances of winning go up dramatically. The core champions are Zareth and Jin as the carry options, with Shaco, Jarvan, Karma, and Lux as the supporting units. At level eight, you'll be adding in Ash and Lulu, which provides Sniper, Mystic, and Celestial. Level nine, adding in a second Jin two or Zareth two generally works best. As mentioned, both Zareth and Jin can carry, but the better of the two is definitely Zareth. The issue is that it can be rather difficult to two-star him in time to stabilize your composition.
position, so it's often best to itemize your Jin as a mid-game carry while you're looking for the Xerath. Items for Jin are Infinity Edge, Last Whisper, Runins, and Trap Claw. If there's several armor-heavy compositions or Bramble Vest, it's best to prioritize Last Whisper over Infinity Edge. Xerath does best with magic damage items, but the two core items to find for him are Rage Blade and Quicksilver. Quicksilver is necessary to allow him to do as much damage as possible during the first cast of his ability. Your goal with this build is to hit level 7 and roll just enough gold to stabilize. That means finding Jin, preferably Jin 2, and upgrades to your other Dark Star champions. Mordekaiser serves well as a frontliner and an item holder for Xerath items. Don't overspend your gold though as you want to hit level 8 by Raptors or the round after as you need that 6% chance to find Xerath. From there, look to hit Jin 2 and Xerath 2. If you've been win streaking, have high health, or are winning rounds with a strong board, you can push to level 9 early to increase your chances of finding Xerath. The win condition for this build is Xerath 2 with items in either an additional Xerath in the late game, at level 9, or a Jin 3. Chrono Kale is taking the number 2 spot on our list. Kale has been a strong carry option for all of set 3, and while there's a few variations you can play with her, in the current meta, we're going to be going over Chrono Kale. The core champions of this build are Kale, Shen, Zaya, Thresh, Wukong, Ezreal, Kassadin, and Misfortune. This provides Kale with both of her traits and for Chrono to increase her attack speed even more. At level 9, you can look to add in Lulu as she's one of the stronger late game solo champions. Items for Kale are flexible, but a good rule of thumb to go by is to give her at least one attack speed item between Rage Blade and Rapid Fire Cannon. Both work well together, and your third item can either be a damage item or a defensive item depending on what you find. Misfortune is the second item carry, but she's quite flexible flexible, so look to give her most items made from a tier or any magic damage items. Quicksilver is the only must-have on her as it ensures that her first ability channels for the full duration. Much like Darkstar, your goal for this composition is to roll at level 7 to stabilize. This means finding at least one Kale and hitting upgrades to the other core champions. Try to stay above 30 or 40 gold and look to go to level 8 on 5-1 or earlier if your economy is strong enough. From there, you want to roll to hit Misfortune 2 and find her mercenary upgrades, but you can also push to level 9 if your board is strong enough and roll at level 9 instead. The win condition for Chrono Kale is either Kale 3 or Misfortune 2 with mercenary upgrades. And our number one composition on the list for this week is Jinx Carry. Jinx is proving to be one of the most sought after carries in 10.9 as she's used as the main carry in both Brawler Blaster and Rebels. Determine which build you'll play by what champions you hit, but the single most important thing is finding Jinx 2. Four items for Jinx are quite varied, but usually you want mostly attack damage or on hit effects with one defensive item. In Rebels, you can skip the defensive items as she'll be getting a ton of shielding from the Rebel trait. Giant Slayer, Last Whisper, Infinity Edge, and Red Buff are all fantastic damage items to give her. Quicksilver, Trap Claw, and Guardian Angel are all viable defensive items. Scout what other players are playing and try to grab Last Whisper if there's a lot of players using Vanguard as their frontline or if there's a Bramble Vest. As mentioned, Jinx can be played in either Brawler blasters or rebels. For blasters, you'll have the normal four brawlers with Lucian, Ezreal, and Misfortune as the other three blasters. In rebels, you can play any of the six rebels as long as you have Jinx. Add in Gangplank and Misfortune at level 8 and Lulu at level 9 for Mystic to pair with Sona. Whichever builds you play for depends on what champions you find as you make your way to level 7 and that's the level you'll be rolling. Roll to find at least one Jinx and upgrades for whichever champions you found for either their build. Level to 8 once you're strong enough and find a Jinx 2. The win condition for Jinx carry is either a Jinx 3 or Misfortune 2 with mercenary upgrades, though Gangplank with upgrades is a viable win condition as well in the Rebels variation. Alright, that is it for our list of the top 5 compositions in 10.9. As we said, there's so, so many builds right now in 10.9 and before we end the video, we've got a few more to go over in our honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is one of our two builds that use one card champions as the carry, Candyland. While the name of this is a bit silly, it's basically a hyper roll composition that aims to hit Poppy 3, Twisted Fate 3, Leona 3, and Zoe 3. Poppy and Twisted Fate are by far the most important of those four, so your goal is to hit at least those two. Poppy also has specific items she needs for this build, which are Bramble Vest, Death Cap, 
and Dragon's Claw. Other defensive items work, but you for sure need Bramble Vest. Twisted Fate requires Morella Namicon as his ability is AoE and some type of tier item such as Seraphs or Shojin. The basics of this build are to hold onto the four listed champions throughout the early game, don't level, and try to build up your economy as much as you can. At 3-1, after Krugs, you will roll down your gold to no lower than 10. Stop when you hit either a Poppy 3 or Twisted Fate 3 and sit on your gold until you get back to 50. Once at 50, you can slow roll and get the rest of your core champions 3-starred, and then you begin leveling. Add in either 4 Vanguard, 4 Mystic, or a mix of the two as you level up and bam, you're good to go. Soraka and Wukong are especially strong options as Soraka provides Star Guardian and Wukong gives Chrono with Twisted Fate. Ultimately, this composition does best in the mid game and falls off more in the late game, but when you have the required items and champions, it can be a consistent top four build. Okay, for our second honorable mention, we have another hyper roll build, Zaya Carry. There's two different styles to Zaya Carry. One is known as Pikachu and the other is known as Shredder. Both rely on Zaya 3 as the main carry and the rest of your champions provide the Frontline, Blade Master, and Celestial. Pikachu refers to using Double Static Shiv as the primary items for Zaya, and Shredder refers to using Last Whisper with Infinity Edge. Quicksilver tends to be the best third item to give her as you want to do as much damage early on in the fight as possible, so making sure she doesn't get CC'd is very important. Shen, Caitlyn, and Fiora work best as supporting champions to provide three Blade Master and two Chrono for Zaya, with Jarvan being a strong fifth champion due to his attack speed buff. From there, you can add in whatever you want, though four Celestials work well with Ash, Cassidan, and Rakan. Aurelia can replace Fiora, which gives you Mana Reaver for Cassidan. Overall, your goal is the same as Candyland by hyper-rolling with the main objective being to hit Zaya 3. You can look to three-star Fiora, Shen, Jarvan, and Caitlyn, but Zaya is by far the most important and is actually the win condition for this build. Much like Candyland, it can be outscaled late game, but when you get the items with Zaya 3, whether you're playing Shredder or Pikachu, you're like going to get a consistent top four. All right, folks, that is all we have for you for today. As we said in the introduction, there's so many viable builds right now in 10.9, so don't let this list dissuade you from exploring other compositions. Let us know in the comments section below what builds you've been enjoying in 10.9. Thank you for watching, and if you're enjoying our content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future Giant Slayer TFT videos.